I would say, yes, Zimbabwe is ready to adopt uh, technology enhanced learning in schools and universities. So at all levels of education, the question is always on um, effectiveness, right? On the effective implementation of initiatives, given the economic and political challenges that we face as a country and that we've been facing for decades now. And of course the impact um, on the, the larger impact on the education sector. So maybe let me try by qualifying why I think Zimbabwe is ready. And then we can talk about the real challenges on the ground. I will start with a recent example, actually. Um, after the government of Zimbabwe announced the early closure of schools in March this year, as a response to the corona outbreak, the Ministry of um, Primary and Secondary Education, I think together with the education cluster in Zimbabwe, they immediately went to work developing various strategies to support um, the continuity of education for students. And two of the main strategies that they actually uh, worked on included the use of technology, one of them being uh, education via radio programming, and then another was um, a digital and online learning strategy for those with access to computer devices and access to the internet. Um, so the ministry has been receiving support to implement these different strategies from various partners, including UNESCO. And I know I have read that, you know, the higher, what is it called? The higher life foundation as well, um, has also been providing support through an online platform called Rosivo online learning platform. I think that's what it's called. So yeah, I mean, this shows some commitment on the government side. There are many challenges, of course, um, and we can get into that, but that's the government. And then talking about the people of Zimbabwe, we have always been ready to adopt and effectively you know, apply technology in different parts of our lives, as well as in learning activities. It is also important to note that there are many uh, technology initiatives by the people of Zimbabwe right now uh, that have happened and that continue to happen in the country at all levels of education. We may not hear much about them or they may not be um, you know, financially supported, but innovation in Zimbabwe has never waited on the government and it has never uh, stopped because we are in difficult or hard times. In fact, I think in many African countries, uh, innovation strives during hard times and that's what's happening in Zimbabwe. Last week, I recently read about a young man at St. George's, his name is Truman, I forget his last name, but um, he developed a WhatsApp chatbot called Zido Paden, uh, and it's designed for students who take the uh, Zimsec syllabi to, um, you know, they can access files and readings via WhatsApp, they can then download and, you know, look at the readings at a later stage. And even though there's a cost attached to WhatsApp bundles, I think, you know, it is arguably cheaper in Zimbabwe at least to get WhatsApp bundles. So, yeah, um, you know, it shows that we have the brains and the interest to create and adopt um, educational technology. And I'm sure my fellow panelists here are even more qualified to highlight, you know, the specific challenges uh, that we face in the country because they have real, you know, field experience in education. But maybe before I finish, I just want to point to the, some of the immediate challenges that come to mind first. So we, if we talk about infra infrastructure, for example, and challenges in terms of access to uh, the internet and connectivity, we know that not everyone in Zimbabwe has access to the internet to be able to use technology for educational purposes. Um, in fact, a recent study by the EdTech Hub highlight, highlighted that 55% um, of primary schools have access to electricity and only 26% internet connectivity. So this is the reality we are living in, right? And also note that there are obviously disparities between rural and urban schools. If you look at the UZ right now, the UZ currently has um, a few students on campus because of the corona, um, because of the pandemic, right? Uh, in terms of, because they are trying to curb um, 
the virus, of course. And students have access to Wi-Fi while on campus. But what happens when they are at, um, you know, they are different homes and then they lose access to, to that Wi-Fi. They cannot afford the data. Um, I know currently they use it. I think um, Brock had a partnership or contract with the three main networks in Zimbabwe. So students can uh, have access to a data bundle, I think, to in order to access the ELMS, which is the learning management system at, um, at the university. But if you're in a remote place in Zimbabwe, how do you even access that bundle? And for other subject areas, can you imagine if you have, even if you have a smartphone, can you imagine trying to type a 2000 word essay using your smartphone? So, you know, there are real challenges uh, related to that. And of course, you know, lack of limited training and support to both students and instructors. Where technology is available, there also needs to be specific investments um, in terms of supporting that technology. If we send a bunch of tablets to a rural school in Zimbabwe, or even a, 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 a school in the city in Zimbabwe, we cannot just leave that and hope for the best. Huh? I currently work in instructional education technology at the institution that I am at in the US. And even in a country like uh, the United States with resources, you learn very quickly that an amazing professor who is an expert in their field, um, that necessarily does not translate at all to being a good instructor that can effectively deliver content using technology. So yeah, you know, there are many road challenges we, we need to think about. Um, other indirect challenges are not paying our teachers fairly. You know, that also affects using technology in, in uh, learning. The cost of an iPad in reality is much more than what we pay our most experienced teachers in Zimbabwe. So yeah, I mean, I, I will end it here because I'll